Hello, in the first two presentations, I talked about the concept of federalism and what makes India a federal state. So far, we have discussed the constitutional provisions that make India a federal state. However, the success of federalism depends on how constitutional provisions are implemented, that is, the practical aspect. The success of Indian federalism to a large extent depends on democratic politics of our country, that is, on the approaches and activities of political parties and leaders. During the framing of our constitution, our leaders favoured a strong centre to promote security and integrity of India. Hence, the constitution calls India a union of states instead of a federation. Today, I will talk about the approaches such as linguistic states, language policy and centre-state relations which helped in strengthening Indian federalism. Let's discuss linguistic states. After independence, the integration and merger of princely states was unplanned and at the spur of the moment. Many leaders like Pandit Nehru, Sardar Patel at that time felt that linguistic states would lead to disintegration of India. Therefore, states should be reorganized on the basis of administrative convenience. However, in 1953, the government was forced to create a separate state of Andhra Pradesh following agitation. Hence, Andhra Pradesh was the first linguistic state. This led to the demand for linguistic states from other parts of the country too. State Reorganization Commission was set up by the government and on its recommendation, state boundaries were changed along linguistic lines. It led to the creation of 14 states and 6 union territories under the State Reorganization Act. So to sum up, state boundaries were changed, new states were created to ensure people speaking one language lived in the same state. Later on, states were also created on the basis of cultural, geographical and ethnic differences. And undoubtedly, formation of linguistic states has made India more united and stronger. Now, let's discuss language policy. When we talk about the language policy, we need to discuss the difference between national language and official language. National language refers to the language that is most widely used in cultural, political and social domains. Whereas, official language refers to the language that is used for government operations. India is one of the largest multilingual nations in the world. However, India does not have a national language. Indian leaders, while making the constitution, planned to use Hindi as the official language. During British rule, English was used as official language at central level. Therefore, use of English was to be continued for 15 years and was to stop in 1965. However, many non-Hindi speaking states demanded to continue the use of English. As a result, central government agreed and now in India, we have both English and Hindi as our official languages. The 8th schedule of the constitution contains the list of 22 official languages. A candidate can opt any of the scheduled language as a medium to take exam conducted for central government position. The government of India promotes Hindi, but it cannot impose Hindi on states. State governments have their own official languages. In order to understand how centre-state relations affect federalism, we need to understand centre-state relations. So first, let us talk about it. The constitution divides the power between centre and state specifically in three areas, which are legislative, financial and administrative. If we compare lawmaking powers, we find that centre enjoys more powers. It makes laws on subjects mentioned in union list and concurrent list. During national emergency, centre can make laws on subjects of state list. 
When we compare financial power, we find that most of the taxes or revenue goes to the center. Center can take loans from other countries or international organizations, but not the state governments. Moreover, state governments depend upon the center for grants during any calamity. With regard to administrative relations too, center dominates. IAS and IPS officers are recruited and appointed by center. They hold important posts in the states but remain loyal to the union government. Keeping these dimensions of relations between center and state in our mind, now let's discuss center-state relations in practice. It is true that center enjoys larger powers than the state government, but both work for the well-being of Indian citizens. However, federalism works effectively only when the ruling parties at the center and state cooperate. When we look at the trends of our politics, we find that in the beginning, that is from 1952 to 67, there were almost no conflict between center and state because the same party, that is Congress, was ruling both at the center and states. However, after the fourth general election in 1967, different parties were ruling at the center and in states, leading to a radical change in center-state relations. Center-state conflict was at its peak because states upholded their powers, whereas center tried to constrain their powers. After 1990, we saw rise of regional parties, that is, parties having hold in one certain state. No single party was able to get clear majority in Lok Sabha. National parties had to form alliances to form government. And in formation of such alliances, regional parties played an important role. This led to a new culture of power sharing. The national parties started respecting regional parties and on the other hand, regional parties became more active in formulation of national policies. After discussing the trend of center-state relations, we can conclude that federal power sharing is more effective today than it was in the beginning years after independence or after the constitution came into force. Please read page 19 to 23 and try to find answers to the questions given in Let Us Try.